South Bend. And so tonight, Notre Dame is looking for the sweep as the Irish play their final home game of the year against the eighth-ranked Minnesota Golden Gophers. And so for the final time this year, we welcome you inside the Compton Family Ice Serena. Tony Simeone alongside the 14-year NHL man Steve Conroy. So happy to have you with us as we wrap up this series and this season on Peacock. Last night, Steve, Notre Dame maybe had their best performance of the year. Six goals in total. We've been talking a lot about the freshmen this year, and boy, a couple of them shined last night. They really did, and you look at Cole Knubel. It took him 11 games to get his first goal, and it was an empty netter. He's maybe been the hottest fighting Irish player over the last six weeks here, where he normally is, in and around the net. But watch the hands on this redirection. Not a lot of guys can do this. He's providing a screen. He gets his stick on the puck. Yes, that beats the goaltender cleanly. And how about Danny Nelson? He was all over the puck, all over the ice, creates the turnover. And how about the shot? Mentioned it last night. That's an NHL shot. Absolutely beats the netminder. Nothing you could do on it. And yes, the freshman, a big part of the game last night. Eight freshmen in the lineup for Notre Dame tonight. Notre Dame was outstanding last night. On the other side, Minnesota they were playing so well coming into this weekend 9-1-1 mm -hmm. in their last 11 last night was maybe their worst performance of the year one guy though that stood out was Jimmy Snuggerud he of course has all kinds of accolades I think we expect a big bounce back from him tonight yeah the, the whole team and Jimmy himself he had five shots but it didn't look like the Jimmy Snuggerud we saw at least over in the Olympics and that's the thing that really jumps out about him is his shot he can shoot it from anywhere on the ice from where anywhere in front of his body that a high rise but this one I don't think the shot he wanted it ends up going up over the net but this last one on the power play this is typical Jimmy Snuggerud the one timer Ryan Bishop was fantastic in this game but for order for them to have some success Jimmy Snuggerud has to be on his game see if he can find it in game two it's the final regular season home game and a robust Irish senior class will be honored tonight when we come back it's game two between Notre Dame and Minnesota Senior night in South Bend for the second straight year. Ryan Bischel is in between the pipes wearing the green jersey as they always do on senior night. As usual, outstanding last night against the Gophers. Has his save percentage up to 929. Fourth in the country, only three percentage points behind first. On the other side, this guy looking to bounce back. Justin Close had a save percentage of 980 in the five games coming in. Last night gives up four goals. He's yanked to the second. Steve, I think we expect to see the guy we've seen throughout the rest of the season show up tonight in game two. Yeah, not that we'd hang any of those goals on Justin Close, but we know he's capable of better. Final home game of the year for Notre Dame. Third to last regular season game for both of these teams. They both play Michigan in a series to end the year. Notre Dame will play Michigan next week before they sit out the final week of the season. Minnesota will sit out next week. They'll probably watch Notre Dame play Michigan. Then they'll get the Wolverines in the finale. So you know Minnesota, of course, last night didn't play well, but then having to sit for about 13 days, they want to go into that break with a good taste in their mouth. Yeah, and it's funny, Bob Mosco, when he talked to us midweek of this past week, he talked about that. You know, he didn't want the guys looking too far forward. He wanted to make sure uh, that the pedal was to the metal, that they weren't taking a night off. Last night, you know, I thought the team looked tired. And when they got behind, it was a huge uphill battle for them. There was a moment in the first period where there was a puck sitting in the crease. Minnesota had a chance to possibly score. They didn't, and then Notre Dame was able to score the first four goals of the game. Never really looked back as Mike Kester, the defenseman, shoots one that goes just wide. Irish able to clear it out again wearing these green jerseys they only wear them on one occasion annually and it's in their final regular season game that's tonight they have 12 seniors being honored as the Gophers are on the move here this is their second line of Snuggerud, Moore and Pitlick combined for over 90 points on the year and were held scoreless last night I think the Irish did a real good job protecting their blue line Forcing the matter and there's another example, you know making sure that Minnesota didn't have any e easy entries it's Jimmy Snuggerud going to work in the corner came into the weekend with 18 goals That's tied for 10th in the country and as the puck ends up on the stick of Pitlick couldn't get a quick clean shot off And now the Irish have it coming back the other direction. Here's Knubel working his way in good work that time by the freshman defenseman Sam Renzel to break it up. Yeah, using that length he has, he's 6'4". He's listed at 175 pounds. I, he's got to be more than that. But uh, yeah, that's a smart play. Draft pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. 
25th overall a couple years ago. No points now in his last four games. He has 24 points on the year. 23 of those are assists. We featured him last night in the broadcast open. Season-long drought, though, with those four consecutive games. They'd love to see him break out and generate some offense tonight. And I know Paul Martin, who's behind the bench for Minnesota, coaches the defenseman. And I think that's probably going to be his message to the D crew, is to join the rush when you can. Much like the uh, Fighting Irish did last night, Notre Dame did a real good job getting that defenseman up, being the fourth forward on a lot of those plays. Just one whistle so far in this one as clock approaches three minutes gone in the opening period. Maddox Fleming will fire it into the glove of Justin Close, and there's the second whistle of the night. Bob Motz goes the head coach, Steve, sixth year. He's had him in back-to-back -back Frozen Fours overtime of the national championship last year. They're knocking on the door in Minneapolis. He finds a way to get the best out of his team, and I walked into the building with him literally three hours ago, and he said that was not very good. So I imagine the need to talk with a lot of his guys, obviously the leadership group, and uh, you should see a, a different attitude from the Gophers in this game. They were riding in a really impressive 11-game stretch coming in. 9-1-1 one one in their last 11. Really since the turn of the calendar year, more or less, they've been a really sharp team. Maybe the best team in college hockey in 2024. See them ranked eighth in the country. It just feels like they're going to have a chance when it's all said and done when March and early April roll around to be in the mix once more. And we, we talked about that success, and he said a lot of it had to do not with the offense, but with the defense. And he said that some of the freshman defense been really getting some valuable experience and playing like upperclassmen. And in particular, he was kind of pointing out Sam Renzel. Well, it was interesting. Last night was the third time this year they've given up six goals in a game. It was the largest margin of defeat they've had, though, in one of those losses. And on the year they're averaging, their opponents are being held to just two and a half goals per game as Justin Janicki navigates his way into the offensive end. His speed was out of the reach of Carpenter, and then Bryce Brodzinski can clear it down the other way. Yeah, I thought Janicki had an opportunity to give it to Hunter Strand, who Strand, I thought, had a real strong game for the Fighting Irish. Don't know that he showed up on the score sheet, but boy, he was solid deep in his own end. Janicki again. Feeds one and chases after it below the goal line. There's Snuggaroo. Five shots last night in the five goal loss as Bischel sees one the whole way. Able to make the save on a shot off the stick of the talented freshman Oliver Moore. Ryan Bischel, the Medina, Minnesota native, as you see the Jeff Jackson. We should point out he won his 1,000th game last night. But Ryan Bischel. Let's not forget about his performance. You know, I wouldn't say relatively easy night, but ended up stopping 31 of 32 shots. You mentioned the save percentage up to 929. That is world class. You're talking NHL, yeah. AHL, <laughs> college hockey. Uh, those are fantastic numbers. Landon Slager drops it off. Paul Fisher shoots. Good stop by Close. Able to shrug it off, then a wide angle shot. He has to fight off as well. slagger has got the puck again. Out it comes. Pluszynski on a one-timer. And it ricochets towards the corner. That might have been blocked out front by Cal Thomas. Snuggerud for more. Looking to get it back to Snuggerud. Wasn't in his wheelhouse. And the Irish can carry it out of their own end. Paul Fisher with a nice shift there. Offensive shift. He had two assists last night. Kind of a quiet two assists. But again, another freshman contributing in a big way for the Irish. 15 points on the year for Fisher, the freshman defenseman. And you saw him in the opening weekend. Kind of had a rough first game of his career. Gave up a couple of plays that led to goals. He's looked like a different player really every month. He's made strides. Now that's the thing with freshmen coming in. It's such a learning experience. Just the first month. You know, you're basically playing about eight to ten games. And then after that, it's just a you know, steep learning curve. And that's exactly what we've seen from Paul Fisher. Irish looking to get this one out of their own zone. Does eventually come out to center. Renzel, though, freshman defenseman for the Gophers. Able to fire one that trickles wide. Connor Kurth, the sophomore, is there. Cycles it down low, looking for Brody Lamb. Aaron Huglin then sends it below, where Bavaro is able to gather it. And the Irish look for a way out. Brennan Ali connects with Danny Nelson. Had an excellent game last night. You featured him in the open. This is a second-round pick. One of those freshmen Notre Dame has really seen grow throughout the year. 
just the little things he does. You know, in the faceoffs, he was over 60% last night. He just controls the play when he's on the ice. And he's he's a strong body. He's a big guy. And we saw him a couple times last night, just one hand on the stick, making plays, using the other hand to, to fend off a defender. Not a lot of whistles early on as Jaden Davis has a chance to shoot. Good stick by Kester as it tips up out of play. Irish almost took advantage of a giveaway in the Gopher zone. A nice job by that fourth line, Brady Bork, along with Davies. And there you see that play, a quick pass from Bjork to Davies. And then that stick comes out from Kester. That's as good as a block shot. That was a redirection from Kester. I like the way Davies plays. You know, he doesn't have a lot of points this year, but it just seems like he brings a lot of energy. Always playing the man, always on the body. You got to keep your head up when number 15's out there. And Jaden Davis scored his first goal in the first series of the weekend. Steve scored it against Clarkson back in October. That's his only point of the year. Hasn't scored since, but to your point, the shifts have been better. He's on the fourth line tonight with Bjork and Fleming. And you mentioned last night he was making some moves and making action happen in the offensive end. Yeah, he's, you know, that fourth line last night got a pretty regular shift. Yeah. And, and they match, and I'll tell you what, Minnesota's got a great fourth line. J Jimmy Clark, I thought, one of the better players last night. John Middlestad, of course, we know about him. And Charlie Strobel draws into the lineup for Minnesota. A couple of uh, lineup changes for Bob Motzko and his crew. Yeah, Garrett P Pinanini's out of the lineup. They went and brought Strobel in. Also, Max Rude comes in the lineup for Luke Middlestad. Sustained an industry injury, undisclosed towards the end of game one. So Middlestat out as this puck goes. Uh, <laughs> wow, it hits the center hung scoreboard here inside Compton Family Ice Arena. It was cleared from the go for end and it's gonna bring a face off back in the Minnesota zone. That's Bryce Brodzinski with the high flip, right? I like the play. Typically you do that when you're down your own zone. He did that almost just inside the blue line. And uh, hopefully the uh, Jumbotron here at the Compton Family Ice Arena is okay. Don't see any glass down on the ice, so I guess we're good to go. As far as I can tell, all the pixels still are intact. Last night in the face-off circle, Notre Dame's been top 10 in the country really throughout the year. They won 27 of 50, so they were right at their average, 54% coming in. Minnesota's just a tick below 50 coming into the weekend. The Irish won four more so far tonight. They're tied at four apiece. You know, I was worried about that aspect of the game when you look at the freshmen that Notre Dame has, especially the top two centermen and Cole Knubel and Danny Nelson. And they were both well over 60% last night. Here's the top line for the Irish. Knubel, who you just mentioned, out there with Moynihan and Landon Slaggart, the captain. Slaggart and Moynihan likely playing their last regular season home game in this building tonight. Oh, good move by Oliver Moore. Carries it in, and all oh, the Gophers had a chance to work with odd numbers against Bischel, who has to make this save off a quick feed from Moore to Snuggerud, and he does enough. Good job by Moore there, because he kind of mishandled the puck. It could have been a dangerous play in front of the net. The puck ends up in the corner, but he spots Snuggerud right out front. That's a quality save by Ryan Bischel. There you see him dancing with Patrick Moynihan. And then right here, the puck just gets under his stick. But look at the head up. He checked his shoulder, spots Snuggerud, and that's a dangerous shot from number 81 in close. Already, Steve, tonight, this second line from Minnesota looks to have a different pep in their step. A couple good shifts. We saw the Snuggerud shots in the broadcast open. He had a few opportunities last night, but you can already tell, looking like maybe higher grade opportunities are brewing for that second line early on. You know, typically when you get embarrassed on the road, it's a leadership group you look to, and not only did Bob Motzko talk to these guys, but I'm sure these players within themselves had a pretty deep discussion about the way they played last night, which was not very good. And uh, yeah, totally different atmosphere, totally different attitude uh, from this team to start the game. Again, Minnesota, over the course of the previous 11 games, had only trailed for roughly 34 combined minutes. And 28 of those came in one game. So they've been playing with the lead quite a bit as of late. And Notre Dame didn't really ever let them. They took the first goal and never looked back. That first goal always so important, but specifically against Minnesota, the way they played recently. This puck rolls along the line, and now it's settled by Kester. Nice play by Bischel there. He was almost acting like a defenseman, 
He realized he could get to the puck first, so a little mishandle there. Oh, <laughs> and I think he wisely sits on it. That was, I think, Jake Boltman behind the net that lost control of it. Almost a disastrous giveaway in their own zone. Yeah, Jake Boltman had a real strong game last night. Had the assist, and there you see that just maybe off his skates. Kind of a tough pass. Handcuffed him just a little bit. Jake Boltman had the assist last night. He also had a couple of shots. But prior to that, Ryan Bischel, real good job just coming back and acting like a defenseman and basically a D to D pass behind his own net. Now, Boltman and Edina, Minnesota native. Good. The state championship in his high school playing days. Now playing as a senior. He, of course, came in during the COVID year. There's a lot of fourth year seniors that could come back next year for Notre Dame. Worth mentioning that fifth year senior Trevor Janicki, who was out last night, out again tonight. They hope to have him back next week for the regular season finale against Michigan. And Grant Silinoff still out of the lineup yeah. for Notre Dame as well. Those two guys are both Minnesota natives as Chesley comes in, feeds a shot for Huglin that Bischel saves, and then he smothers the rebound. Huglin for Minnesota had the lone goal last night, and he is a tricky player. And the one timer, Ryan Bischel, the key here, it wasn't a big rebound. Yes, it came off his pad, but he's quick to cover. And there you see the one-timer from Huglin and Ryan Bischel. Even though it's through legs, he spots it and it comes off his pad, but just about three feet off his body. And that's the one thing about Ryan Bischel, you watch him long enough, he's always waiting for the shot. His anticipation, second to none, I think, in NCAA hockey. I mentioned Huglin. He's the reigning third star of the week in the Big Ten, and this puck is tipped towards Bischel. That was that was out. redirected. That, that's a really good right pad save because that got tipped about five feet in front of him. Good work by Brady Bjork was able to take the puck away and send it towards net. Fourth line again for Notre Dame with some early shifts. Here's the fourth line for the Gophers. Middlestat has it taken away by Bjork once more. Able to feed Davis. He had the puck taken away. And then Bjork at the center line tries to drive it in deep. Minnesota won't let it get down low. And they bring it out the other way. Here comes Renzel. Gophers can go three on two. Middle stat for Renzel. Shots blocked by Bavaro. Huge block there. That's a three on two. And Drew Bavaro, fantastic stop. He's kind of turned his body sideways to make the block. Bavaro in his second year with Notre Dame after transferring from Bentley. He, too, one of those fourth year seniors. Could come back next year. Could be done after this year. They'll figure that all out once the postseason concludes, as there's a giveaway. In the offensive end for the Gophers, never stand on the shot. Now a backhanded try is kicked out, comes out for Begley. He reloads, shoots again, and Bischel is able to block her it off. Cal Thomas shoots, doesn't get through, ricochets into the corner. This is the top line for the Gophers. Nevers with Nelson. And Brodzinski as another shot goes high and wide. Sends it out. Axel Begley drives it right back down low. Lengthy shift for Minnesota in the offensive end. And now, fortunately for Notre Dame, the puck deflects up and out of play at the nine minute mark of the opening period. Scoreless through the first 11 minutes here in South Bend on senior night for Notre Dame. Midway point of the opening period here in South Bend. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. You look at how Notre Dame's done it this year, Steve. We talked a lot about the freshmen coming into the year. I don't want to say it was a slow start, but they've really picked it up here in the second half of the season. They're really looking like they've kind of found their way at the college level. Well, Cole Knubel would tell you he had a slow start <laughs> because he only had one goal in his first 18 games. Since then, Tony, eight goals in his last 13 games, one of the hotter Notre Dame fighting Irish players. So, uh, yeah. And, and Listen, Danny Nelson's been solid throughout, but he's taken it to another level since the World Junior Championships. And in the uh, in the open, I misspoke. I talked about the, the Olympics for Snuggerud. Yeah, might Obviously, well be. met the World Junior Championships. There's a drop pass just laying at the blue line. Snuggerud was trying to hop on it, and he takes a spill. Pitlick recovers and is able to find more. He turns, drops it off, penalty coming, oh. feet in front. Oh, an opportunity for Minnesota to possibly score and get a power play as well. But the Irish are able to touch up the puck. Yeah, Ryan Seedham used his skate to block that pass. Earlier, though, it was Cole Knubel. Are they going to be a holding call, maybe interference? 
Notre Dame man in penalty number 22, holding. Holding is the call. So, Cole Knubel is an important penalty killer. They will not be able to use him for the next two minutes. So somebody else is going to have to rotate in and right at center ice. I lost the puck a little bit, and there you see the battle. Yeah. Kind of an iffy play, but a, you know, referee had a better angle than me. It, it looked like he was trying to lift his stick. Maybe got it a little too high. Gophers were 0 for 2 last night on the power play. Now they go to work for the first time. One timer coming. Chesley didn't connect. For the recover though and reload it for Kester. Brodzinski back for Kester. Shoots, gets through. Bischel makes the save and the Irish can clear. Good job by Justin Janicki just to come down just a little bit to help out in front of the net. And that big rebound, and that's exactly what Ryan Bishop was trying to do. He had two gophers standing in his blue paint. Big rebound, easy clear for Janicki. How about this number for Minnesota? In their wins this year on the power play, they've executed at 29%. In the losses, they're just two for 22 now. Mm. Under 10% is Brodzinski. Oh, his shot saved, rebound was loose. Janicki is able to carry it out of harm's way. Finds Nelson. And and he'll take it into the gopher zone before dumping it in deep. I think Ryan Chesley had a chance at an open net, but that puck was either on edge, maybe it jumped up a little bit, and it allowed Ryan Bischel to get back across. I don't know that Chesley got the shot off, but that's their best look on the power play thus far. Good work by Notre Dame with the blue line. They don't let the gophers get it in deep, and now they take it away. Irish captain Landon Slagger tried to drive it deep, but then it's intercepted by Jackson Nelson, and back comes Minnesota. Brody Lamb trying to send it down low. Bavar will try to go off the wall and out. It does take a fortuitous bounce for Notre Dame and ricochet to center. A good back pressure there from Landon Slagger. You know, created the turnover. Oh, almost a bad clearing attempt by Bischel. But that allowed the Fighting Irish defenseman to jump on the puck and get it down the ice. Final 15 seconds of the first power play of the game. Renzel hard around Bishop. Wow, great stick work. Knocked it down, <laughs> tries to clear. Renzel will hold it in. That was a bunt and settle. More for Snuggerud. Fans on the shot. Held in though by Renzel. Then his shot is deflected up high over the bar. And now Notre Dame can bring it out the other way. Four on two. Good work that time. Good stick by Cal Thomas to break it up. Because you're right, Irish had numbers in the offensive end. And we had some tired power play guys out there for the Gophers, too. So that's a huge play at the blue line by Thomas. Under six minutes left. Shots right now in favor of Minnesota. Nine to four. They outshot the Irish last night, 32 to 28. But it was Notre Dame with a 6-1 win. There's John Middlestad. Wax it in deep. Bischel stops it again. Henry Nelson out of the lineup last night. Back in tonight as the fourth line is still out there for Notre Dame. Dueling with the fourth line of the Gophers. Gophers exit cleanly out of their own end. There's Jimmy Clark going to work in the corner. Riding a season-long 11-game point drought is Clark. Thought he looked good last night yeah. in a couple shifts, like you said, but couldn't produce any points. No, I agree. I, he was noticeable last night on that fourth line. Now Huglin's shot. Good block by Davis to get in the lane. Fourth line still out there for Notre Dame. They're looking for an exit ramp. And they'll get it by virtue of the offside call. And it stops play. Jimmy Snuggerud. In the slot, and yeah, that puck was bouncing. It just jumps over his stick. Eventually, he had five shots last night. I like that play there from Renzel between the legs. Unfortunately, his shot got deflected also. You see the numbers on the year, but no goals in his last eight games. So he is certainly due. 18 in his first 23, mm. for what it's worth. Still tied for 10th. In the country in goals, Landon Slagger, Irish captain last night, got to 18 to tie him as Moore drops it off for Rhett Pitlick. Backhanded feed, looking to get it back to Moore. Into his skates, Irish take it back and then 
Minnesota's offside after the puck came out to the neutral zone. Well, that was impressive to me for the Irish against Minnesota, especially inside their own blue line, was the way they played with composure. You know, sometimes you get a puck and you want to make a quick play, but a lot of these defensemen got their head up. Sometimes they button hook back. Hunter stranded it a couple of times as a centerman helping out. Not rushing the play, but just taking what the opposition gives you. And if they give you time, take it and just make sure you're making the right play. Bavaro feeds one off the back of the net that was in a precarious spot for a moment. Now Knubel's got the puck along the wall. Backdoor feed in front. Oh, my goodness. Just rolls off the stick that time of a lurking Patrick Moynihan. And the Gophers can clear it out the other way. Here's Pitlick with Snuggaroo charging towards net. His feed deflects up high and into the corner. Michael Mastro Domenico. Sophomore defenseman for Notre Dame. Shrimp the puck deep into the gopher end and now goes off for a change. As Jackson Nelson drops it off for Brodzinski and his shot deflects up and hits the netting. So the shots are 9 4 in favor of Minnesota. I'm going to say the Irish have blocked maybe five. If they count a block as a deflection with your stick, and that was a perfect one, perfect example there, Ryan Seedham getting that stick out on Brodzinski. Um, so that is probably 15 attempts by Minnesota. Yeah, there's the deflection. Good look by our crew here, Compton Family Ice Arena, who's done a fantastic job all year long. Blocks are at 11. Oh, you shortchanged them by yeah. five. They've been in the shooting lanes, to your point, Steve. But that's, th that means that's 20 attempts now by yeah. Minnesota. So a much different go for team tonight. No, completely. They already look like a different bunch as Begley struggles with the puck at the blue line, but is able to get it down low for Nelson. And now Carter Slagger takes it away for Notre Dame. This is three freshmen on the ice. Nelson with Ali and Slagger. Nelson takes a spill behind the play as Minnesota brings it out the other direction. Seedham. Say it was not played with a high stick, so play continues. Now Middlestat in an open area. Couldn't get the shot through. Justin Janicki into the offensive end for Notre Dame. Centers one that comes back for Paul Fisher. Carries it and fires one that comes all the way back towards the Irish end. Nice job by Justin Janicki showing his speed, and, and I think he's really improved his speed this year from the beginning of the year till now. But then he realized the defenseman was jumping up Fisher. He took his position at the blue line. That's a heads up play from Justin Janicki. Jimmy Clark again. Off for Renzel, carries it along the blue line. Janicki. Runs him into the boards, and the Irish able to retrieve the puck. This is an icing call. It's going to bring it all the way back the other way. There's Hunter Strand. I talked about him earlier. Now, he's not always been a centerman, but I remember a couple of years ago talking to Jeff Jackson. Because of some injuries, they had to have him move to center, and he's been fantastic there. And he also said it's the tip of the iceberg with him as far as his talent goes. In fact, he compared him to Jake Evans, yep. uh, former fighting Irish player. And he works hard. He's got that inner drive, and that's something that not every player has. Hunter Strand has it. 53% the faceoff circle coming into the weekend was Strand. Good point Jake Evans, I think, scored a goal the other day for Montreal. He's a captain here at Notre Dame. The Gophers carry it back into the neutral zone. Kurth takes it from the wall, tried to carry it in deep. Knubel now working on him. And that pass goes under the stick of Kester, and that'll let Notre Dame change. It's funny, over by those player benches, you see a lot of snow, and it, the, the ice, the ice kind of gets choppy over there, too. That pass comes back hard. All of a sudden, he got airborne. Nothing really the defenseman could do. Approaching the final minute of the opening period, Brody Lamb takes one away. Sends it out for a long distance drive that time from Kester that rolls wide. Hughley tried to cycle it down low, but Landon Slacker was able to intercept for Notre Dame. Chesley, he's hit. 
by Knubel. It allowed Slagger to feed one towards the middle. Comes out to center for Snuggerud. He comes into the offensive end looking for a trailing more. He recovers it, tried to send it back to Snuggerud, but it ricocheted offline, and then Nelson can recover the puck for Notre Dame. Half a minute to go in the opening period. Slagger finds a trailing master Domenico. Down low for Carter Slagger. Out it comes. Quick shot. Never got through. Begley able to dislodge the puck from Slagger. That puck never got out. Boltman kept it in. Final seconds of the opening period. Ali below the goal line. Three seconds left. Ali out for Slagger. He'll shoot with time winding down. It deflects just wide of net. And it'll be a scoreless first 20 minutes of play. I like that shift from Brendan Ali. Got in the body. But what a first period by Minnesota. A complete turnaround from last night. Nine shots, maybe 12 blocks by the Fighting Irish, but still scoreless after 20. Yeah, 12 block shots from Notre Dame in the opening period. Looks like a different Gopher team through the first period tonight. During the intermission, have a chance to hear from some of the Irish seniors talk about the importance of senior night, and then we'll get a chance to break down what we saw in the opening period from South Bend. Final home game of the year between Notre Dame and Minnesota, and it's scoreless after one. Scoreless after one period of play here in South Bend on senior night. Notre Dame and Minnesota playing their final regular season game of the year. We welcome you back inside the broadcast booth. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. Steve, last night, this game kind of got out of hand a little bit. Notre Dame had a 6-1 victory in game one. So far, seems like a little bit of a chess match in the first 20 minutes, but I feel like Minnesota's been getting maybe the higher level of chances. They certainly generated more offensive opportunities. They definitely had the better looks. Uh, and if you're a Notre Dame fan, you got to like it because there was a bit of bend, but there's no break. And of course, when you have a goalie like uh, Ryan Bischel, don't break very often. <laughs> Let's look at some of the highlights from the first period. No goals, but you're going to see some saves from Ryan Bischel. And then we'll see Notre Dame blocking a lot of shots in front of him as well. Yeah, but when they needed him to be good, he was. What did he end up with? Nine shots. And here he's anticipating that shot from Hugelin. Was in good position here. I like the kick out of that left pad. That might have been a pass from Jackson Nelson to the front of the net. But uh, Bischel always reading one play ahead on the game. There you see him just getting from his left to his right. And of course, those quick legs. You mentioned the defense, in particular blocking shots. Drew Bavaro doing a good job there, turning his leg to block it. Again, right in front of the net. That's a forward, Jaden Davis, with a big block. And yeah, even getting a stick on a shot is considered a block. And Ryan Seedham did that, I believe, three times in the first period for Notre Dame. So real good job defensively from the Fighting Irish as far as sacrificing the body and blocking shots. Now look at that number right there. You pointed out, you were quick to notice it, 12-2 in favor of Notre Dame. That can be a game total sometimes, 12 yeah. blocks. Uh, the flip side of that is Minnesota's generating a ton of opportunities. If you're Notre Dame, are you a little bit worried about how many chances you've given them so far? Well, I think so. And, and the play was down in, in Notre Dame's end of the ring. So what you have to do now is think, hey, listen, we only had four shots. Maybe Justin Close is getting a little cold. Yeah. Let's test them. Last night wasn't Justin Close's best game either. So you want to get some shots and certainly try and play a little more in the gopher zone. I'll ask you this about Minnesota. They've still not led yet this weekend. They've been leading all kinds of games really in the second half of the season. How important is that first goal for Minnesota to get it and hold on to a lead at some point this weekend? You know, it's funny you mentioned that because I talked to Bob Motzko last year about scoring the first goal, and, and I think I talked about this last night. He said, as soon as you score that first goal, the other team now in their mindset, they've got to score two. Mm -hmm. They've got to get two in order to win the game. So, yeah, it, it's a huge momentum push for whoever gets that first goal. We'll see who grabs the first tally tonight in the home regular season finale for Notre Dame. Second period is after this. Scoreless after one between Notre Dame and Minnesota in game two this weekend. Hard to believe it's the final home game of the year for the Irish. They'll play next week and then be out for the final week as the Big Ten sorts out their regular season. For the Gophers, they came in obviously the eighth ranked team in the country. Talked about the power play coming in, Steve. We talked with Bob Monsko about it, how it can maybe get harder as the year goes along. Teams have seen you a little bit more. Yeah. He wasn't really thrilled with the power play coming in. Look at how valuable it is. When they win, it clips right around 30%. When they lose, it's now right around 9%. 
you feel like they need to get a power play goal that could just kind of jumpstart them going forward right now. Yeah, this kind of lines up with an old coach of mine, actually a, a former <laughs> University of Minnesota player, the great Badger Bob Johnson. Of course, he never coached at Minnesota, but he did play at Minnesota. He said, you know, if you win your special teams and play even five on five, you're going to win 80% of your game. So, you know, you check the scores every night in the NHL, and teams that win the special teams battle typically go on to win that hockey game. So, uh, Badger Bob Johnson, way ahead of his time as far as coaching goes, and still my all time favorite coach in the NHL. All timer, Badger Bob. As you mentioned, last night Notre Dame had the only power play goal, one of the many reasons that they won. Six to one. In fact, I think the first five, at least the first four, were in five on five skating. They tacked it on late, but they still had the advantage in special teams and kept the Gophers off the, the score sheet. Well, here's the other thing about your power play, especially if it scores early. You're typically your best players are on the ice, your goal scorers. And if they get a goal, or even if they get some looks, all of a sudden it gives them some confidence. And when your skilled players taste blood, smell blood, uh, they typically jack it up for the rest of the game. Oh, a takeaway behind the net that time. Slagger. An opportunity for Notre Dame. His feed, though, out of the reach and pucks out to center ice. Boltman sends it in close, handles it, and plays it for the corner. Good stretch pass ahead for Pitlick. He's on his way in. Bischel does enough. It leaked through, but it goes wide. Got enough of it. Pitlick had the breakaway last night that he stoned, got stoned on. That was a partial breakaway that. Ryan Bischel makes the stop. Chesley a drive. Bischel through traffic is able to kick it wide. Gophers have the pressure on. This shot intentionally wide. Rolls up on the back of the net. Play continues. Renzel shoots wide to the net. Again, Pitt looks onto it. Renzel again fires it over the crossbar. Knubel is able to clear it out to center ice for Notre Dame. Minnesota doing a better job using their defensemen in this hockey game. Here comes Moore. Shoots and Bischel is able to make the stop. Pitlick had a good look last night on a breakaway. And here, I'm not too sure, but it looks like Boltman loses his stick. Yeah, it was against the boards. Partial break there. The shot from Pitlick. And even though it gets by the glove hand of Ryan Bischel, he got enough of it to make it go wide. And that's the thing about the way that the Fighting Irish defend. They get five guys in around the net. That opens up the point men for Minnesota. So they've done a good job here in this game finding those point men. Here's Huglin. Good work behind the net. Takes it towards the paint. Oh. And it's backhanded in. Oh, from a wild angle below the goal line. Connor Kurth is able to bank it off Bischel, and it's 1 0 Minnesota. You know, Zach Kluzinski kind of upset with himself. Now he's just standing in a defensive posture. Watch 26 in front and you know not expecting this puck to come out and because his skates were turned sideways the Kurtz centering pass goes right off of his right blade. You'll get a good look at it here. Watch him. He's watching the play. Huglin he was the intended receiver but it goes off Luskinski and he can't quite get to that redirection off his skate. First goal goes to Minnesota. And the Gophers have their first lead of the weekend. Take some of the wind out of the sails here inside Compton Family Ice Arena on their senior night. That's a big time goal for Minnesota to take reins of the opening tally. Yeah, and Connor Kurth, too, you see him, his seventh goal of the year. Six feet, 210 pounds. So this kid is put together, and he's a hound on the puck. Six round draft pick, the Tampa Bay Lightning back from. 2022 and that third line all drafted into the NHL Kurth by Tampa Bay Hugelin by Buffalo and then Brody Lamb by the New York Rangers and for Kurth you saw a seventh goal now he's got 20 points on the season he's coming off a weekend against Penn State when they swept the Nittany Lions with a couple of three nothing victories he had a goal and an assist last weekend continues his scoring here and has to do wonders for Minnesota after last night's performance they find themselves in front Irish oh. trying to respond to Bavaro's shot from distance. Didn't miss by much. I think that went off the knob of Close's stick. Didn't see it to the last second. Well, now Begley just lost his stick. He's going to go after it. Bavaro trying to take advantage as his shot deflects up high and wide. 
Alfaro again, loves it down at the line, carries it in, shoots, close makes the save, rebound was loose, not cleared yet. And Irish still have the pressure on, Justin Janicki takes his time in the offensive end, Bavaro, as Notre Dame tries to change in the midst of this shift. Seedham's got it, onto the ice. Shot deflected just wide of the net. That was from B Brady Bjork and almost tipped in. Yeah, that was a great third line shift, but as you mentioned, the fourth line, part of the fourth line, got out there. Now all four guys from the fourth line on the ice. That's probably the best pressure the Fighting Irish had had, sustained pressure in this game. Shots now 14 to 7 in favor of Minnesota as close will play the puck. Didn't get out. Maddox Fleming able to keep it in. Clark can't get it out. Fleming drives it down lows. Again, the fourth line for Notre Dame still out there. Working on the puck. Bjork trying to hold it in at the line. He does. Goes high in the air. Rinzel's able to glove it down as now the fourth line for the Irish will go off. Here's John Middlestat with some speed. Takes it behind the net. Good work by Pluszynski. Takes the puck from him and now starts the breakout the other way. And the Irish are a little bit over eager as they enter the offensive end. Great job defensively by Zach Pluszynski, the one-on-one -on -one with Middlestad. And earlier, it was Drew Bavaro with the shot. Through a couple bodies, and you see it go off the knob and the stick of close. That was a third line on the ice. Then the fourth line came out, grabbed the baton, and the redirection just over the crossbar from Brady Bjork. Wouldn't that be a nice goal for the senior? Oh. This is his 15th career game tonight, just the third of the season. Bjork played last night in his second game of the year. He, had, he does not have a point in his career. I mean, if the guy gets a point on senior night here, this place is going to erupt. I, I love what Jeff Jackson said to us about Brady Bjork. He said he's a behind-the-scenes culture builder. Yep. And I thought that was just an excellent way to put that. He, obviously not in the lineup every night, but he said he never complains. It's easy to check out when you're a healthy scratch. He said Brady Bjork never does. Everybody's got a role. And Slaggart finds Seedham. They exchange places. Seedham's below the goal line. Slaggart holding his spot at the blue line. It comes out for Boltman. Wow, trying to go back diagonally for Seedham, who's lurking. And he finds Knubel as the top Irish line goes to work right now. Moynihan trying to get it out for Boltman. Now Nevers pokes it to himself. Mason Nevers crossing oh. over, hits the inside of the post. Bob Mosco talked about the talent of Nevers and how he's really turned it on in the second half. He used Ryan Seedham as a screen there, a little stutter step, put that shot, I believe, through his legs. Not sure if Ryan Bischel ever saw it, and we heard iron, so it went off the post. So Nevers comes from a pretty athletic family. His dad was drafted both by the NHL, Pittsburgh Penguins, and yeah, there you see it, off the post. He was also drafted by the Houston Astros. Major League Baseball, and that beat Bischel, but it didn't beat the iron. Evers is somebody that had 10 goals last year in that run to the National Championship game. Just three this year, but got off to a slow start, had to come back from an injury. Bob Motzko this week in his media availability, the term he used was pretty simply, just said, he's back. <laughs> and it looked like it right there. There's Bavaro, slides it across, and then it comes all the way out to center. And now it's poked away by Snuggerud. Watch out for Snuggerud. Good recovery by Mastro Domenico to tip it up out of play. Mastro Domenico's done that a few times tonight. And Snuggerud's not a slow guy. And he probably had three quarters of a body length on all the defensemen because watch him kind of strip the puck right there. Lift the stick. He gets to it, and then it was Master Domenico actually who got the puck stripped from him. He got on his horse, got back, and the redirection with the stick. That's a great second effort from the young defenseman. Irish with a substantial edge in the faceoff circle. They're now up 16 to 10 on faceoffs. It's Brody Lamb settles it in the corner for the Gophers. Kurth, who has the only goal. Retrieves the puck and finds Begley. Across it goes. Good block that time from Carpenter, though. The rebound opportunity for Thomas goes wide. Now Janicki's got it, and he finds a way out. 
with Paul Fisher into the offensive end. Fisher drops it. Here's Janicki circling the net. His wraparound ties the game. Justin Janicki makes it 1-1. Wait till you see where Tyler Carpenter ends up. Carpenter started the play with a huge block. I hope we get to see it. He dragged his right leg and got the puck going in the other direction. And Justin Janicki, I talked about his skating ability. Watch him circle the net. Wide open net. And here we go. Watch the drag of that right leg. The block. They get it going the other way. And 28 eventually, he heads hard to the net. But watch him just hang on to the crossbar as he heads right there. He jumps up out of the way and wrap around. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they maybe look at this. Was it goaltender interference? Did he prevent the goalie from getting to a spot he wanted? Bob Monsko's talking to the officials. Here comes an announcement. He might be challenging. Minnesota is challenging the call on the ice to see if there was goaltender interference. All right, now both you. coaches have talked about how they've I don't know what the right term would be. Maybe they've been a little bit dismayed at how goaltender interference has been called just across the board this year. It's tough to get a consensus. This will be tough to determine because, to your point, Car I've never seen this, Steve. Carpenter was hanging on to the crossbar like a set of monkey bars in the backyard. Yeah. But you know what? I, I think he could have possibly thrown on the brakes. Was he pushed in? Maybe there he was. Right. This will be a tough one for the referees because prior to the blue paint, he couldn't, well, he could have stopped, but then as soon as he hit the blue paint, he was pushed by Huglin, and then he couldn't do anything about it. And there you see him up, and does he prevent Close from getting to a spot he wants to? I think maybe he does, but he was pushed into the net by a Minnesota player. That's a great point. I, I think that if he's not pushed by Huglin, this is probably a goaltender interference call, but there's nowhere for Carpenter to go based right. on what Huglin's done to him on the play. One Let's take a look at when, when they come together here. So they're together now. You can still put the brakes on, but at this point, Huglin's pushing him. Yeah, so n now he can't do anything because Huglin's pushing him yeah. in that direction. So I think that has to be the determining factor. Yes, he could have stopped prior to the blue paint, but he didn't have to. When he got to the blue paint and he was going to stop, he Huglin's was getting pushed. Him, yeah. right. Oh. <laughs> I, I, it's going to be a tough call. Well, and, and, and I can see it going either way. The call on the ice is a goal. Right, right. Now, they could go review any part of this for goaltender interference. Should also note again, it was a challenge from Bob Botsko. So if they don't win this, they lose their timeout. I wonder if they're talking to Steve Piotrowski, who <laughs> he's in charge of officials, and I know he texts me a lot. And maybe he'll be texting me on this goal. Please, please do, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Check my text right yeah, now. keep an eye on the on the cell phone. This is one of those I think if you're a, a fan for either team, you're yelling at the screen right now. Come on, Carpenter, if you're Notre Dame, couldn't get out of the way. That's a good goal. And if you're a Gopher fan, you're saying, what the heck is Carpenter doing, hanging on to the crossbar when the puck goes in? Right. We're going to try to take a look at the overhead because it might kind of tell you a little more of the story about how Huglin was pushing him. And, and from overhead. Now he's heading, he's in front. Now that's where contact's made, yeah. and now he's getting pushed. And you see him trying to put the brakes on. I don't know that Close would have got there. A great job by our staff here yeah. down at the Compton Family Ace Arena. Push, shoved, or fouled by defending player and causes contact with the goaltender. Now, <laughs> there's really no contact there. I mean, it's very little. It obviously impeded Close's ability to get over, right? Yeah. So this is taking a long time, and I think they are really trying to figure out if he was pushed or not. And it looked, at least from our vantage point and the and the replays, that he was pushed by Hugo. Let's hear the call. After video review, it has been determined there is no goaltender interference. We have a good goal. <laughs> Oh, look at Bob Motzko. He can't believe it. Yeah. Well, because it's gone against him so much in the past. Yeah. You know, he's figured, hey, throw me a bone, guys. This happened to us against Wisconsin a few weeks ago. But I, I, if you go by the letter of the law, and great job by our crew getting the actual wording of the rule up there. He was pushed ever so slightly, but he was pushed by Hugh. I think if Huglin had done nothing 
then Carpenter skates into the blue paint. They disallow it. But there was a bit of contact from Huglin. And we've got a tie hockey game. Not very often you see this. I'm trying to read lips. I, <laughs> he doesn't like it, though. I know that. I know that. And I, listen, Minnesota, they played a. They still talk about it sometimes. I mean, 2019 playoff game here. A call they didn't like, and then Notre Dame wins it a few seconds later on the power play in overtime. They're not going to like that one. But I, I think, to your point, replay and the graphic all put together, wow, big hit. You can at least see why they left the call or let the call stand on the ice. And you know what? If I'm Minnesota now, use it as motivation. This guy's, guys, we got to beat. Notre Dame, we got to beat the refs too. If, if the, and listen, I'm not blaming the refs. I, I actually think it was the right call. Yeah. But I could have seen it going either way also. But by the letter of the law, Hugelman was pushing him. And that, you know, that negated the interference from Tyler Carpenter. This is going to be a nice puck that will bring it the other way. Yeah, unfortunately, too, with all the. Everything we were reviewing right there. It was a great play by Justin well, Janicki to circle the net and score you know the goal, what? too. You read my mind. What's lost in this is the talent from Janicki, who's literally on one skate, never takes a stride. So he literally covers about 40 feet of ice without pushing off his blade, but using the inside edge to just kind of circle the wagon, to circle the net, and to tuck it home. Close makes another save, trying to settle this game down now because this building's come back alive. We talked about when Minnesota got that first goal, it really subdued the crowd here. There's a ton of energy. The way that call was announced, too, that was interesting language used to describe that it was going to be staying on the ice. Yeah. Well, there's Justin Jan again. Listen, all of a sudden now, the Irish have three lines that can really do some damage. And, and although, you know, Carpenter Strand and Janicki did not score a goal last night, they did at Wisconsin. In fact, they had a couple of goals in game number one. So yeah. you've got three lines now going, clicking, connecting. Uh, that's dangerous. And, and Ryan Bischel talked about it. It's not just our top two lines. It's our third and fourth lines contributing. Good hit by Kester. Dislodges the puck from Brendan Ali. Starts the go for breakout. Nevers, who just a few minutes ago hit the inside of the post, able to center a feed that's backhanded towards the top of the paint. Wow, Slagger takes a huge shot from Jackson Nelson before the Irish can clear it out of harm's way. <laughs> Jackson Nelson's a pretty big body, 6'4", 220 pounds. And he put the freshman down rather easily. Now an icing call. Fourth line on the ice. Now take that back. That's our second line. Danny Nelson, Brennan Ali, and Slager. Forced to stay out there. And some fresh bodies for the Gophers. See Nelson right there. Ten goals last year off the faceoff. The shot doesn't get through. He's fifth all time in Minnesota high school history in points. Hmm. Want to guess how many? How many? 290. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's at Laverne High School back in his day, now playing with the Gophers. Graduate student, captain. It's an outstanding career with Minnesota. Love to lead him back to another Frozen Four. They've been to two in a row. Question is, can they capture that national championship this year after getting so close last year against Quinnipiac in the final? Tony, we talked about it last night. Nothing like Minnesota high school hockey. I, I wish all the states would kind of adopt yeah. their MO when it comes to high school hockey. Oh, Plusinski oh. shot tipped over the bar. Didn't miss by much. Top line for Notre Dame's out there again. Moynihan. Tried to feed it towards the blue line. And now it's driven into the corner. The Gophers bring it out. This is Pitlick with some speed in the offensive end. And he'll send it down low as the Gophers change. Just to follow up on your point, we mentioned it last night. It's worth mentioning again. 233 college hockey players right now active that are from the state of Minnesota. That's more than 100 than any other state. Wow. And, and you know what? I have to stand corrected. I, I got a a text from my cousin who lives in Minnesota. I said, land of a thousand lakes. Of course, we know it's land of 10,000 lakes. Stop by a factor of 10. <laughs> no one said you were coming to watch this game for a math lesson. 
Well, I never let the facts get in the way of a good story. And I think we were talking about playing on frozen ponds. <laughs> That's part of the reason that hockey is such a great sport in Minnesota. There you see the Irish players who hail from Minnesota. Yeah. That's a pretty good list. I got eight guys, if my math is correct. Which Ma is math is correct okay. this time, yeah. <laughs> we saw Danny Nelson last night, Maple Grove guy. Now Justin Janicki, Maple Grove guy. The, the Minnesota natives, a couple Bischel and Net. They brought some pain this weekend to the Gophers as Renzel gets one in on Bischel. Brody Lamb's able to recover it and cycle it down low. Here's Kurth. He's got the only goal for Minnesota tonight. This is the third Badger line, bigger part of the third Gopher line. Going to work right now as Seedham finds a way to connect with Janicki. And Notre Dame brings it out. Boltman lays it down for close. He won't take any chances. He'll stop play at the midway point of the second period. Halfway through the contest between Notre Dame and Minnesota. And this game is tied. Kerr has the tally for the Gophers. And it's 1-1. Tied in the second period between Notre Dame and Minnesota. This is the final home game in South Bend. So a little bittersweet. Get a chance to honor Notre Dame and then honor all the people that have worked on the crew this year, Steve. And they hear our voices a lot watching these broadcasts. We go up and down the list. I always try to get a bunch of names in. I talked to Johnny McDermott, who is our graphics coordinator, does an amazing job with our graphics. He's gotten all the names on here of everyone who's helped us throughout the year from whether it's replay, camera operators, audio. We got, a, got a great crew tonight because with Junior Parents Weekend, there's some usual suspects that are not available. There's Gary Banks working on camera, handheld, as always. But can't say it enough. This is the third year uh, that you've been doing these games, Steve. Always great to call them with you. There's a look at the control room. There's Derek. Oh, he's got, oh, wow. Showing his colors a little bit. OK, <laughs> again, it's an, it's an unbiased broadcast, we promise. But no, Derek does a great job leading this entire crew. Of course, Gary and Kathy and audio make us sound great. We can shout them all out. I'm glad we got the graphic up there to honor everybody. Uh, it's, they do a ton of work to make these shows come together and, and do a really important thing, which is make us sound much better than we are. And that's a hard thing to do. Uh, <laughs> but they do it on a, a weekendly basis. And I think I saw Phil there behind one of the cameras. Yeah. Always like talking food with Phil. <laughs> Could be a <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Food, talking food with Phil, yeah. <laughs> Great crew, great work this year. I think it's, again, another banner year for these productions as Bishel makes the save. This is now the sixth year, I think, that the Notre Dame production crew has been involved with NBC and Peacock. Used to be on NBCSN, and just it's evolved every single year. And I think the way that the productions look every single year, it continues to improve. So a tip of the cap to everybody involved in Derek Coleman's crew this year. Yeah, they. Uh... They're tireless workers. I mean, we show up and call the game. Yeah, we're here a couple hours before, but these guys are literally here all day long, uh, sometimes missing meals, and uh, they make sure everything goes off without a glitch. That is until we start speaking. I'm sure if they're missing meals, you're hearing about that from Phil. <laughs> That's right. All right, enough food. Here we go. What a game we've got so far here in game two. Much tighter than it was last night. Notre Dame jumped out to a 4-0 lead as now this puck is loose at center and here comes the Irish captain. Landon Slaggard is shut down by Close. He's got his biggest save of the weekend. Well, Kester maybe a little mishandle of the puck and Landon Slaggard off to the races. He tried to beat Close high. I think like blocker side and Close makes the stop. Watch Kester here. Yeah, it just bounces off the stick and then it's Lando the commando off to the races, and yeah, I was trying to go high. That short side, not a lot of room there, but there's a little peak, and he didn't quite get it high enough. Good job by Chesley to make him rush that shot. Landon looking for his 19th on the year. Irish win the face off, but they play it back into the neutral zone and have to retreat. Carter Slagger, younger brother of Landon, takes a spill. He's back to his feet. Puck's not out as Nevers absorbs a hit by Pluszynski. Ali recovers the puck. Down low it goes for Nelson. Looking back door and then his feed ricochets up and out of play. He was looking, I think, for a streaking Paul Fisher. Yeah. 
I, but I was watching Ali because he's like a one-man wrecking crew out there. He just ran over one of the Gopher players. And that's a pretty strong line when you've got Brendan Ali with Nelson and Carter Slager. Uh, mentioned Ali. He's six feet, 200 pounds. But his motor is always going, and his legs are always moving. And if you know anything about force, it's mass times acceleration, and his mass is always accelerating. And there's a lot of force behind those hits. More math on this broadcast than I thought we'd ever hear tonight. More into the offensive zone. Here's the second gopher line. Bischel did just enough to kick it out wide. Puck comes out to center ice, and here comes Notre Dame the other direction. Justin Janicki, who's got the lone Irish goal, Jams on the brakes in the corner. He had it taken away. Moore with a good backhanded feed to find an open Chesley who can stretch it ahead for Snuggerud. He winds it up. Bischel fights it off and Boltman can clear. I think he had to fight it off because Boltman got a stick on that Snuggerud shot. Maybe changed the direction right at the point of contact, but still good job by Bischel to make sure it wasn't in behind him in the net. Snuggerud now with two shots on the night. That's seven for the weekend after five in the losing effort last night. Boltman up for Slagger. Good work that time by Thomas to break it up. Back comes Lamb into the corner. He's locked up by Moynihan. They both take a spill. Play continues. Mastro Domenico, long feed is broken up again by Thomas. It's two times in a row. Yeah, and Thomas done that a number of times tonight, and he's another long player. He's He's got the good reach. He's got a big body. It's six feet, 210 pounds. He looks a lot bigger than six feet, I'll tell you that. He's also second on the team in block shots coming in at 51. You were the one to ask him, Bob Motzko said, especially the young defensemen have really taken it up a notch here along this stretch of good hockey they've been playing over the last month and a half or so. It's funny how that works. You know, their first month playing college hockey, you're getting used to new surroundings as freshmen. New systems, new players, new teammates. It's a good oh. takeaway by Bjork. He feeds Davis, and he scores. Notre Dame has the lead, and Brady Bjork has his first career assist. That's what you want from your fourth line. Create a turnover, and then wreak havoc. That's what Davis does. But you hit it on the head, Tony. Nice. Turnover there, the forced turnover by Brady Bjork. And skate to the left, shoot back to the right. Confuse close a little bit. And that was a perfectly placed shot. Don't know whether you'll see it on this replay, but it goes off the right post. You fake from the middle, you push it wide, and then you shoot back from where you were skating, and right off the post and in. Wow, what a turn of events. And what a big fourth line shift for the Irish. Steve, we talked about him all weekend, and I think he just validated it. Bjork playing just his third game of the season as Nelson's on his way in. Chance to answer, and he does. Jackson Nelson, top shelf to tie the game. Well, Nelson's showing his strength there. We've mentioned him a couple of times tonight. He's 6'4", 220 pounds, and he literally runs over Ryan Seedham, who's not a small defenseman. 6'3", 200 pounds, but watch number 24. He chips it, he chases, and right there, just kind of bodies him away from the puck. And when you chip, and right there, just get the inside lane. See him lost his balance a little bit. Perfectly placed shot by Nelson. The right shot coming down the left side, just up over the glove. And that's a big response from Minnesota. What a response from Nelson. Wow. Didn't waste any time recording the game tying goal. It comes just 18 seconds after Notre Dame takes the 2 1 lead. And this game is level once again. Wow. Well, Jackson Nelson's first point ever was against Notre Dame in NCAA hockey back in November of 2019. And they're from behind the net. And like that. Kind of pulled it in too on that snapshot. And when you pull it in, sometimes you think, okay, he's going to go short side because he's pulling it into his body, but then he pushes it back to the other side the other way. And then he beats him high glove. Oh, wow. Good work by Pastor Domenico to break up that opportunity. And now Notre Dame takes it back. Strand feeds it down low. Here's a shot that goes just wide. Good shot from 
Tyler Carpenter might have got redirected right at the last second by Middlestat. Wow, Navarro pivoting below the goal line. This game is ratcheted up here in the second. It was scoreless after one. Four goals here in period two. Janicki had it taken away. A chance to take the lead. A big stop by Bischel in front. And now Notre Dame can bring it out the other way. Some tired legs will go to the bench. Fish, long feed. Bischel comes out, plays it towards his bench. Slaggard will bank it off the wall. Janicki lays a hit, and Slaggard recovers. Drops it off for Knubel. It's being worked on by Snuggerud, and it comes out, and Slaggard will take his time and drop it for Ryan Seedham. Peck never got out. Moynihan's got it. Moynihan for Slagger to his backhand. And close comes across to make the save. I like the play from Danny Nelson, the draft pick of the New York Islanders. Right off the bench, there's a change. 11 jumps on the ice. He creates the turnover. And players will do this on purpose. They realize, oh, watch the bench. He just jumped on the ice. Defenders don't see that. They make a pass. Nelson picks it off. And the opportunity from Landon Slagger. It's a great pass for Moynihan, too. See the puck handcuff Slager just a little bit. He closed, did a good job of closing down the lane. This is going to be an icing call. It's going to come back to the Minnesota zone. Notre Dame still having their way in the faceoff circle right now. 23 to 16. There's Landon Slager. And he and Snugger locked up at 18 goals on the year 10th in the country. It's been great for Notre Dame fans to see Landon Slager really play the way they know he's capable of here in his senior season. I love the conversation we had with Jeff Jackson, and you asked him about Landon Slager. And he called him Lando the Commando. I, I kind of referenced it a little <laughs> earlier on. But he said he always had that twinkle in his eye. Mm. And, and, and he, he, the kind of kid that he said, I knew I was going to love as a player. And he loves him as a player because he plays with grit and he plays with skill. Kurth for Huglin, his backhanded feed didn't get through. And then it rolls to the corner. Irish haven't cleared it yet. Good work by Nelson. Backtracking to the puck. He drives it all the way around. And now the Irish do get it to center ice, and Ali will drive it in deep. There's Nevers. His top line is out there for the Gophers. Fourth line out for Notre Dame. Yeah. He just scored a goal. It's Davis is on his way in. Davis shooting towards Close. Bjork was trying to generate a potential redirection, and Close is able to glove it. Well, we've seen a third-line goal, the first goal for Notre Dame, and we've seen a fourth-line goal. That last shift by Jaden Davis ended up connecting. And Brady Bjork, as you mentioned, first ever NCAA point. So mission accomplished, fourth line. They get the puck into the opposition zone. They get a face-off. The third line out there. Off the face off. It's going to roll around the net and give Mike Kester a chance to send it ahead for Nevers. Carries it through and drops it off to Nelson. Just tied the score, tries to shoot again from a similar spot. Just goes over and around. He's got a good shot. Uh, he's a big body. We talked about it. He's got that long stick, and boy, when he leans on it, that puck just jumps off the twig. Fortunately for Notre Dame, after Boltman just broke his stick, they were able to get it out of their own end and bring it into the gopher zone. Master Domenico slides it across. Bavaro's one-timer. Too high. Carpenter dives to keep the puck below the goal line. It's not handled well. Bavaro takes it away. Here's Drew Bavaro. Had it taken from him, then it's cleared the opposite direction. Icing waved off, and both teams will change. as the clock's under two and a half minutes to go in the second. See the fourth line right back out there. So we went fourth line, third line, back to the fourth line. So Cliff Jackson really leaning on his depth players. Generated the go-ahead goal. It only lasted 18 seconds until Nelson tied it again. 
the fourth line out there for Minnesota. Goes under the stick of Middlestat. Irish can go three on two. Fleming for Bjork. Tries to get the shot off. Good work by Fish to deflect it before it could get through. Around it comes for Paul Fisher. Irish will change while on this shift. Fisher sends it down low. Now the top line is out there against the fourth line of the Gophers. They're able to get the forwards off. And now Chesley carries it out of his own zone. There's Pitlick driving it down low. Knubel being worked on. Pitlick takes it away. Boltman's stick is still out there. It may have prevented the pass. Now it creates a three on two. Moynihan gives it back for Knubel. And the shot deflects wide. I think he went off the shin pad of Rinzel. Well, then Moynihan tried to feed it for Boltman, who has a new stick. They just haven't had a whistle yet to clear his old stick. It's still out there in the go for, or beg your pardon, in the Irish zone. As the good, clock's under a minute. We've gone a good two and a half, maybe three minutes. Yeah. And that stick has still been out there. Hunter Strand with a pep in his step. Pivots below the line. Janicki looking to go back to Strand. Flex off one of the referees. Strand has it again. Down low for Janicki. Out for Navarro. He's got some space to shoot it. Oh. Doesn't get through. Gopher's able to, no, not able to clear. Bavaro holds it in. Here comes Drew Bavaro looking for someone in front. Deflects into the corner. Just 10 seconds left. Puck's laying on the back of the net right now. And then a faceoff is going to come with three and seven tenths remaining here in the second. If they'll put any more time on the clock because, you know, that draw comes off to the right of close. And. Plenty of time to win a draw, maybe make a pass and take a shot. Don't think they'll pull their goaltender. And I'm talking about Notre Dame yeah, now. To get the extra guy out. Yeah. Probably not worth the risk. Well, and it's the Slaggart line, the Knubel line coming out. So Knubel mentioned 73, over 73% last night in the faceoff dot. Let's see if he can win one here. Yeah, he's five for nine tonight. So 55%, right around the season average. Does not win it cleanly. Good win by the Gophers to wind off the final seconds of an eventful second period. It was scoreless after one. Two goals aside in the second, Steve. That just tells me I think we're headed for a very exciting third period of play. Yeah, I'd agree. It's, it's kind of like a heavyweight fight. Every <laughs> team's landed a punch and every team's taken a punch. So it does set up for a, a fantastic 20-minute third period. During the break, have a chance to see some of the Irish senior parents speak about their children and their Irish careers here, and then we'll get a chance to look at those four goals in the second period and set up the final regular season period of play in South Bend. Plenty of entertaining hockey in the second. Jaden Davis gave the Irish a 2-1 lead, but the Gophers bounce back thanks to Jackson Nelson. 2-2 two -two after two. Tied at two after two in the final home game of the season for Notre Dame. Final period of regulation on the year coming up as we welcome you back inside. Tony Simeone alongside Steve Conroy. This could be the last time to say our faces this year. I'm sure the viewers at home very excited about that. <laughs> right, they'll be happy. Very entertaining second period. Scoreless after one, Steve. We saw end-to-end -end action. I think that's what we want to see in the final home game of the year. Uh, yeah, and you'll probably get it because this game means a lot to both of these teams. Uh, still, you know, you, you look around the Big Ten Conference and crazy things are happening. Yeah. Uh, anything can still happen between now and the end of the year. Now, Ohio State just beat Wisconsin, yeah. took five points off them this weekend. Let's look at what happened in the second period between Notre Dame and Minnesota. Again, there was no score. Kind of a funny first goal for Minnesota to start the scoring. Yeah, kind of a scrambly play. It looked like Notre Dame was going to end up with the puck. Kurth puts it off the skate of Plusinski. Nothing he could really do about it. It goes off the right skate and into the empty net. So that gives them the one nothing lead. But I like the response, especially from this third line. That's Justin Janicki with Tyler Carpenter hanging on the crossbar. Look at the edge work from Janicki. Bob Mosco not real happy about it, but the goal stood. So that tied it at one. And then it's Brady Bjork to Jaden Davis. And yes, he scores. Skates left, shoots right. That gives him the lead. 
but a quick response by the captain. That is Jackson Nelson with the shot, the high riser, up over the glove of Ryan Bischel, and that makes it a 2-2 game. And the first two goals, kind of chaos in front of the net. The, the next two, outstanding. One off the inside of the post, Nelson goes top shelf. This is how the stat sheet breaks down. You see 24-18 in shots, Minnesota. 24-18 in face-offs for Notre Dame. Going to be really interesting to see how they manage the third. Yeah, and, and it's all about shot volume, I think, at this point. And Notre Dame did a better job of closing that gap. And you see, they only had two blocks in the second yeah. period. So uh, I think defensively, they tightened up a little more. Look at this right now. You see, not a lot from Wisconsin this week. That's going to hurt them as they want the one seed. Notre Dame, again, with a regulation win, Steve, they'd be within two slots of the three seed. That'd be important going into the Big Ten tournament. Yeah, three or the four seed. And it's prophetic what Jeff Jackson talked about earlier in the week. He thinks it's going to be Michigan. And yes, if if the uh, season were to end right now, it would be Notre Dame against Michigan in the first round. We'll see what happens in the final 20 minutes of regulation between Notre Dame and Minnesota. Third period is coming up after this. Almost ready for the third period here in South Bend between Notre Dame and Minnesota. Tony Simeone with Steve Conroy. Well, last week was an important week. It was Steve Conroy's birthday, so here we go. Let's go back. 1989, Steve, this is with the Blackhawks. We've been sitting on this all year. Derek Coleman goes deep into the archives, proves that it's not in black and white. It is in color. Look at this, number five on his way in. That's a goal against the Oilers. 14 years. I think I got you, what was it? Is it 895 games? 895 like 41 games. goals. Yeah. I think I had you with that. Uh, uh, every year, see, this is year three of us. Happy birthday, by the way, last week. Well. Congratulations on another trip, but we learn a lot from you watching these games. I learned so much from you when we get a chance to call these games. Fun to see your footage on display. I think people forget you could really play at a high level, and well. thanks for teaching us so much about hockey over the last couple you know, of seasons. Thank you, and it's just wonderful to be a part of this broadcast. Uh, it is first rate. Of course, I worked for the Chicago Blackhawks for a number of years. Uh, NHL Network currently, too, and this production, you know, doesn't lack in any way, shape, or form. This is uh, all top-notch stuff. And it is led by you, Tony. Oh, you do a fantastic job here. I'm happy to take credit for that, yep. Derek, Colden, Derek Coleman kind of just rides behind the draft that, that I set. I kind of call all the shots. I make all the choices. It's, it's all about me here yeah. on Peacock. No, in all seriousness, it's been fun working with you the last three years. Looking forward to more games in the future, but Gosh, we got a great schedule this year, and we got more games than ever this year. It was fun. This is 21 games this year. The schedule broke in our favor, and it was really fun to see all the talented teams that came through here during this, I think, unique schedule and season for Notre Dame as close makes a stop. Yeah, well, you mentioned 21 games. How about a couple against uh, BU, yep. a game against BC, and, and look at the players that we've gotten to see here on yep. Peacock. Led by Cutter Goche with 25 goals. Macklin Celebrini, he'll go first overall in this year's draft. Of course, Brindley and Leonard, uh, Dylan Duke, and tonight, Jimmy Snuggeroo, and of course, Landon Slaggard all year long. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You saw seven players throughout the year that are in the top 10 in goal scoring. Nine that are in the top 20. You saw Celebrini, who's likely gonna go number one overall. Goche, as you mentioned, all kinds of first rounders on the ice right now. Snuggeroo, one of them, who has the puck as he sends it wide. And we have to point out that all the coaches, coaches uh, coming in here and Jeff Jackson, they, you know, their time is important, especially getting ready during the week for games. And they give us 15, 20, sometimes 30 minutes of their valuable time to talk hockey. And uh, I really enjoy it. That's a great point. Every coach throughout the conference, Bob Motzko this week, Jeff Jackson, <laughs> every week he's probably tired of us. Uh, the coaches throughout. How about the SIDs, too? Uh, Scott Slarks is the SID with Minnesota in his second year here this week. We mentioned Catherine Harvath last week, Notre Dame's SID, who has to put up with us every week. Throughout the conference in particular, Steve, I think the Big Ten SIDs this year did an outstanding job setting us up. There's Catherine oh, there right she in the is. middle, yeah. Yeah, hard at work. Catherine does a fantastic job and uh, over and above what she should do. Dangerous spot. Snuggerud sent it towards Bischel. There have been a couple plays behind the net tonight that haven't been terribly clean. Nothing's really resulted in a goal yet, though, as the second line continues to go to work for the Gophers. If you weren't with us in the intermission, we showed you the Big Ten standings. If Notre Dame wins in regulation, it's going to add a lot of intrigue to both of these teams' final series against Michigan. They'll each only have two games left the rest of the way. Minnesota's off next week. Notre Dame plays Michigan. 
as Justin Janicki holds the puck in the offensive end. Navarro shot doesn't get through. Janicki's after it. Takes it back to the corner. Now Carpenter at it for a moment. Janicki's on it once more. Wow, kicks it to himself. Here's Janicki trying to go upstairs. And ricochets towards the corner once more. Lengthy shift from Notre Dame. Bavaro shoots and close. Can see it the whole way. Like a power play, but it was not. Just good puck movement. And there is head coach Jeff Jackson. And it was really nice talking to him each week. But I had an opportunity, and he opened up to us, which was really nice. He had mentioned that he had a big brother when he was nine years of age. He told us his dad died when he was eight. Uh, his mom, he, he was an only only son, only child. And Larry went out of his way every Sunday to meet up with him. He took him to a hockey game, Detroit Red Wings, and he said that's when he first fell in love with hockey. And he also mentioned some neighbors uh, just down the street, the Sorensons, who built an ice rink. Yeah. That's where he learned to skate. And Bob Nelson, who was a couple doors down the other way, actually coached with him from Northern Ontario. Um, he really helped him get into hockey. So. Uh, it, it's great to hear these backstories of coaches and, and how they fell in love with this wonderful game of hockey. Slagger speed comes out. Yeah, it was great to hear that from Jeff Jackson. He's been big on his team being involved in the South Bend community as well as he's taken a lot of pride in what they've done here. I think because of that story he told us. As Nelson goes to the ice. And the fans getting into it here. I love that. They, they, they realize when there's a high danger chance and they are on the edge of their seats. It's standing room only right now in the student section, which is behind Justin Close, the gopher goaltender on the left side of the rink. Senior day for a lot of them, too. Here's Clark, fourth line centerman. Sends it towards Bischel. On the puck is Strobel. Out it comes. This puck comes towards a dangerous spot in the slot. Out for Renzel. Oh, oh, referee got injured on the play. And he is down and out of commission. You know, I did not see it, and I don't know whether that was a puck that maybe came up and caught the official. The referees are Brian Aaron and Sean Fernandez. And, you know, and, and I like that from Kester. He wants to know if he wants one of the trainers to come on the ice to attend to him. And yeah, that good job by our crew here. They picked that up. The Ke high shot from Kester, and did that go off his, it looked like upper body. I don't know if his arm or maybe his chest. But Kevin, I'll tell you what, that can knock the wind out of you. Kevin Ricks, athletic trainer for Notre Dame, is out there. Let's take a look. I, it is Brian Aaron, I think. There's the puck, and that catches him. Oh, yeah, left, left shoulder. And that's a stinger. That's going to hurt. They don't have as much uh, protective gear no. as the rest of the no. guys skating around out there. If it did just hit the shoulder, that, that might be a fortunate outcome because it didn't miss maybe that lower jaw by much. Yeah, if it hits him in the jaw, even if it hits him in the ribs, I mean, that's probably a broken rib. And good for the crowd here at Compton Family Ice Arena to give him a nice round of applause not very often the crowd cheers for a referee but they <laughs> that are could be here. a first really yeah. yeah but but good for them and he's probably I'm sure a, a hockey player back in his day he's going to stick with it so good for him I've seen occasions where referees have had to leave the ice yeah. and they just go with one ref of course the two linesmen still out there and they can't call penalties in a situation like that good to see looks all right he is favoring that left arm though been on it. It's Chesley off the faceoff sends it in deep. Nevers pivots below the goal line, sends it out for a wide angle shot from Kester. Taken back by Nevers, out for Chesley. Puck is loose through center. Ali able to collect the puck off for Nelson. Slagger shoots close. The position just got a piece of it and it goes wide. I like that play between Ali and Nelson. Nelson gave it right back to him and I was kind of hoping Ali would skate in a little closer before he shot that. Trying to bounce off the stanchion here, the glass. But I think the puck was maybe rolling on him when he went to shoot it. A 
Oliver Moore, freshman, drops it for Snuggerud, hit a skate, and Slagger can take it away. Moore retreats for it and drops it back. Top line for Notre Dame has the puck as Cole Knubel skates into the offensive zone. Had two of the six Irish goals last night. Moynihan being worked on by Fish. Good work that time by Moore and Pitlick to bring it back to the opposite direction. Moore spins and lays it down low for Pitlick. He drives it out for Renzel. Jams on the brakes and now works the blue line. Shot didn't get through. Pucks loose. Great feed for Pitlick. And he couldn't connect. Did not miss by much. Nice move, too, by Renzel at the blue line. That was Snuggeru trying to find Pitlick. And even just a little too hot a pass. Second line. Has looked a lot sharper tonight for Minnesota as Huglin finds Lamb into the offensive end, shoots it wide. Pucks can come all the way out to the neutral zone where Thomas is waiting. Second lines look better for the Gophers, but still no points to show for it. Again, they came in with 91 combined points on the year. They're scoreless on the weekend. Here's Thomas, one-timer, Bischel had to escort it into the corner. Huglin was looking for Kurth. He scored the first goal of the game, winds this one up, goes well wide, and now deflects up and out of play. Well, it's a chess match out here. There you see one of the Fighting Irish players being attended to. That's Danny Nelson. I don't know if that was an equipment issue or possibly something going on, but good news is he's staying on the bench. He's not heading to the dressing room, so he should be okay and good to go. But this has been a real chess match here. Yeah. And, you know, nobody wants to open up. Nobody wants to take any chances. For a tie hockey game. And both teams just waiting for the other team to make a mistake, kind of like that. Almost right there. Clark off the faceoff was able to get something close on Bischel, and Bischel had to make an important save. Kind of a funny play off the draw. It was it was a 50-50 puck. It wasn't cleanly won. Watch it. It just kind of, well, actually, Jaden Davis pulls it back, and it goes off a skate right to Clark, the quick shot, and an important stop by Bischel. Middlestat had a chance as well. Scofers win a faceoff, and Chesley can... Send it down below the line. Strobel into the lineup tonight. With Pinamimi coming out of the lineup for game two. Zone time has been so much better for Minnesota in game two. They've been possessing the puck a lot more. This one goes up and out of play. Fleming in the lane from Kester. Six and a half minutes gone. 13 and a half to go. You said last night, Steve. I think when it became 3 0 Notre Dame. First team to three usually wins. <laughs> next goal is going to be three for somebody. Yeah, next goal is maybe the most important. A nice stick work there by Fleming. And you know, sometimes an overlooked part of the game of hockey is using your stick to prevent passes, getting it into passing lanes. You hear that all the time. But then getting your stick on a shot. And that's exactly what Maddox Fleming did. Top lines out there for the Gophers. Chesley shoots intentionally wide, comes just to the left of Bischel, and goes back behind the net. Another shot from oh. Nelson this time, hit a piece of the iron. Brodzinski back for Nelson, and Bischel quickly pounces on top of the puck. Nelson's such a hard guy to cover because he's a big body. 6'4", you know, 220, maybe a little over 220 pounds. And he's got the quick release, too. And you heard the iron, and you'll see it here. Right off the crossbar in behind Ryan Bischel. There was some room up there, and that's where Nelson was going. Uh, maybe that was the post. It was close to that, where it, where it turns into an L, that 90 degree point. Yeah. Right in the another, corner. another upstairs finish for Nelson. Had that great finish in the second. Now, good work by Kester. Carries the puck in. Wraparound try. Oh, he lost his edge. And Moynihan recovers for Notre Dame. Lost his edge, and maybe the puck came off his stick, too. You got to really rotate your wrist. You got to turn your wrist over. That's going to be a penalty. Cross check is the call. You can see that referee in the corner. And so Minnesota's been possessing the puck the last three shifts in Notre Dame zone, and that will happen a lot. You get playing in your zone, you take a penalty. And it's Ryan Seedham. Number two, cross check. Ryan Seedham for the cross check, so. 
That's what puck possession is all about. You get your looks, you get your chances, but you also might get a power play. And that's exactly what happened. Watch Seedham on Snuggerud right behind the goal line. Power play, Minnesota. Important power play now for the Gophers. Lamb walks his way in. He shot the flex towards the corner. This is the second power play opportunity for Minnesota tonight. They have not taken a penalty yet. We talked about it coming in to the weekend. They're the third least penalized team in the country. They've had 10 shots. We're seven and a half minutes into this period. They've had 10 shots in this third period. See if they can capitalize here. On a power play that's been searching for answers as of late. Overall in the season, well above 20%. They came into the weekend 24%. They're now 0 for 3 on the weekend series. Here's the penalty minutes per game. That's a great number on the screen. Notre Dame in the bottom 10 in the country. Minnesota top three. It's played a factor tonight by virtue of Minnesota not taking a single minute in the penalty box with less than 12 minutes to go in the game. Yeah, that, that, that's an important stat. And it's funny, you talked to Bob Mosco about the power play, and he said they got to be more intentional. Oh. Wow, Bischel, big stop on the shot that time from Pitlick. That was maybe their best chance on the power play, and Pitlick, he's got great speed. He's also got an underrated shot. He's going to drive this one around for Brodzinski. Dropped it back for Kester. Lurking with Slagger, and it's tipped up out of play. Now Pitlick will get this in full stride on the left side and a quick shot. And again, Ryan Bischel waiting for it. Watch him. That quick push, his left to right. He's square to the shooter. Yeah, he didn't control the rebound, but Notre Dame in real good position to clean up the loose change. Pitlick's the guy that's been the Big Ten second star of the week three times this year. Again, he leads the conference in conference goals with 14. Love his 15th right here. Brodzinski out for Kester with his head up. Across it goes. This is Chesley. Just 10 seconds left on the power play. Chesley being worked on by Strand. Notre Dame trying to clear. They can't. Huglin being worked on by Boltman has to take it towards the corner. Irish have killed the power play. They're back to five on five. That was an important kill. Sometimes that can give you some momentum. momentum. This feed tape came towards net. Strand able to fight for the puck. Send it ahead for a streaking Tyler Carpenter. Ian Chesley get tied up along the wall. Puck comes back from the neutral zone. Paul Fisher skates back for it. And Notre Dame looks for a way in. Carpenter did not get a piece, and the icing call will bring it back the other way. Well, another failed power play attempt by Minnesota, and their numbers, you mentioned it earlier, Tony, in the losses, under 10%. And they're winning. Power play's going at almost 30%. 0 for 4 this weekend. And it's funny because you asked Mosco, Bob Mosco about it, and he said, you know, sometimes you kind of go through the motions. I want this team to be a lot more intentional. And they did have a couple of looks. Brett Pitlick, or make that Pitlick probably with the best shot, best chance on the power play. But he also said that later in the season, you get penalty killers that have been playing together all year long. They're really, really good. That was Pitlick again that had a chance. And again, it ricocheted off of one of the referees. Minnesota continues to kind of command play here in the third, Steve. It feels like even though they didn't get one on the power play, we talked about their struggles. They're, they're playing the game on the right half of the rink. Yeah. I see Bob Mosco. It's supposed to go to break unless it's an icing. So that's an icing. He wants this momentum to continue. And yeah. now they are. <laughs> They okay. are going to break. Okay. We'll take the break with them. <laughs> We're back with the end of the game after this. 12 seniors being honored tonight in South Bend playing their final regular season home game to see all the names and numbers. It's the final time they'll play a true home game 
in front of their fans. Chance to host, though, in the Big Ten tournament about a month from now. But all that TBD, very well could be the final game, final 10 minutes that a lot of these players play in this building for Notre Dame. Minnesota trying to spoil that final 10 minutes right now as well. And Tony, correct me if I'm wrong, but the parents come onto the ice after. Afterwards, right? yep. Yeah, so the senior parents are all here. And, and we talked to Jeff Jackson about that. It means a lot to him. He said it means a lot to his players, too. They're all unique personalities. Um, but all these guys contributing both on and off the ice, and that's what he's most proud of. I want to make sure we get this in here, too. That's a name on the boards, Renee Maslick, who's a senior. She's a student manager for Notre Dame. I thought it was pretty neat they put her name on the boards for this one. She's working her final home series. I'll make sure we shout out Renee for all the work she's done as Oliver Moore fires a shot that goes wide. This is the second line for Minnesota, again, against the fourth line for Notre Dame, who's logged a ton of minutes this weekend. They have the second goal of the game tonight for Notre Dame, and they've now done their job and sent it into the offensive zone, and they can make a change. Yeah, they've, they've played very, very well. You know, a lot of times you'll see a fourth line come out, be a little hesitant, especially when they're matched up against a number one line. Again, no Trevor Janicki for Notre Dame this weekend. No Grant Silinoff. They've held up just fine against the number eight team in the country. From the Irish through center ice. Master Domenico winds it up as he crosses the blue line and close makes a big stop. Didn't get it cleanly, but he did make that stop. Seen why Justin Close has been in the top 10 of the country this year in save percentage. Dropped to eight after the performance last night, but still the number's above 920 at 923. He's looked more like himself tonight. He's got 20 saves. Justin Janicki again with speed circles the net for Notre Dame. Drops it for Fisher. Here's Paul Fisher. The wide angle close. Able to make the save. Fisher then back for Janicki. Pivots in the slot. He'll drop for Pluszynski. Trying to go back to Janicki. Nevers breaks it up. One-timer. Pluszynski gets it through. And close again. Is able to make the save. Best flurry by the Irish in this third period. And they had three shots in this last shift. You see the entrance with speed. That's the shot by Master Domenico. Didn't think Close got that cleanly. And you see that center lane drive by Landon Slaggard. He gave it to the wing, went hard to the middle. And then that shot kind of opened up the lane for Master Domenico. Face-offs 31 to 27. Notre Dame had a four face-off edge last night. Pretty similar margin tonight as Nelson is out to take the draw. Had a lot of success last night as well. Close games. I just mean so much. They win another one. And he's 14 for 20 now. Unbelievable. Puck does come out to center ice though. Here's Lamb. Through center, able to carry it into the offensive end. Seaton goes to work on him. So Ryan Seaton, the grad transfer from Harvard, able to get it out towards center, and Danny Nelson's onto the puck. Here he is for Carter Slagger. Shoots low, close makes the save. Nelson's got it again, trying to take it towards net. And it's cleared back out to the neutral zone. Lee touched it in the offensive end, so the Irish are offside. I like the thought process there for Danny Nelson behind the net. You know, realized it was going to be hard to get it to the front. Kind of used his body to shield the puck and then try to get it to the front of the net. Just didn't work out. But the you know, last three shifts have been played in Minnesota zone. You know, the first basically 10 minutes have been played kind of deep in Notre Dame zone. So a little bit of a shift in momentum here for the Irish. Fourth line against fourth line again. Well, especially in the second game, you know, back-to-backs, Friday, Saturday night, you need all four lines contributing. And tonight's a great example for the Irish. Third and fourth lines get a goal. They're getting a regular shift, so, you know, fatigue should not be a factor in this hockey game. Get 
and the Irish trail the Gophers by five points in the Big Ten standings. If Minnesota were to win in regulation, Notre Dame couldn't catch them then. It would be an eight-point margin and only two games left for each team. If Notre Dame wins in regulation, they'd just be two back. There's a lot hanging in the balance here as far as seeding in the Big Ten tournament, how it's going to all shake out at the end of the regular season. It can kind of hinge here on the next six and a half minutes. Knubel into the offensive end. Cole Knubel. Looking for a redirection from Landon Slager. Didn't miss by much. Puck never got out. Moynihan does well to hold it in. Throws it across for Pluszynski. He holds it in at the line and carries it down low himself. Pitlip can't clear. Slager's there shooting through traffic. And it's around for Paul Fisher. He too will shoot from a wide angle. It's going to come all the way back into the Irish zone, and Bishop will play the puck. Bishop trying to play it, hopped over his glove. Nobody home, and now Carpenter's got the puck for Notre Dame. for Nelson. One of the Gopher captains connects with Brodzinski. There's Bryce Brodzinski is the top Gopher line. Goes to work in the Irish zone. Justin Janicki's pass intercepted through center. Back comes Nevers with Nelson. Worked by Ryan Seedham. Get the puck back for Notre Dame. Now Nelson has his pocket picked. Brzezinski's got to get off. This puck goes all the way around. Eventually comes out to center ice. Kurth takes it back, whacks at it, and now chases after it. Feels like someone has been out there for two minutes. <laughs> and now a giveaway. Huglin. Here's Huglin dashing towards net. Oh, Bischel takes a shot. The puck is in. There's no goal sign, and now they wave it off. Well, Bischel was bowled over, but I'm pretty sure Huglin was hit into the net by a fighting Irish player, and that was the reason their goal counted. So I would think that we're going to take a look at this. Worth mentioning. Bob Motzko already challenged and lost. Well, that's a good point. Couldn't challenge again. Now, they can go to the monitor to yeah. review. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. But, but they waved it off emphatically. Well, I, the referee behind the net did. But I think the guy out of the blue line, maybe center ice, had a better look because he realized that Huglin, and we haven't seen the replay yet, but it looked like Huglin was pushed into the net by a fighting Irish player. Did you see Puck? behind the goal line in the net. I never I, I saw not. see if the I puck was in or not. But the fact that he was waving it off, I, I'm assuming the net, the puck did cross the goal line. Here comes an announcement. The call on the ice is no goal. We are going to review it to determine how the puck and when the puck entered the net. It's an official review. Review, excuse me. Okay, so they're going to look at what we're going to probably look at because arms went up. And then a, uh, you'll see a wave off sign a few seconds after, but let's just first see if the puck goes in. So there he's hard of the net. Oh, yeah, it does go in. Did you see it go in? Yeah, it's down in the, you'll see it. Okay, on, it's going to go into the right side of the net here, but Bischel's already on his backside. It's on the rebound here. Watch the rebound. Yeah, okay. You're right. Now, looking at that, we have, we have to watch again. Does Huglin get knocked into the... Oh, yes, he yeah, does. Good point. He gets knocked the in. The call on the ice is confirmed. We have no goal. The face-off is outside. Now, I wonder this, Steve. Could they possibly have determined that they blew the whistle? Could they possibly determine that they blew the whistle and blew it dead before the rebound? I don't see the arms wave it off. That was a quick review. Yeah, that, I mean, that could be a possibility. 
They didn't even they didn't even say in the announcement that they are reviewing goaltender interference. They're trying to see how the puck went in. Let's listen for the whistle. Did didn't hear the whistle till after. Yeah. Looked like Huglin was knocked into the goaltender by Boltman. And there's the puck going into the net, but we play on. I, ha I have to say, I'm a little surprised that it was such a quick review. Irish are on the move now, right out of the shoot. Moynihan trying to wind one up, and it's deflected wide. Oh, never got out. Master Domenico then has his attempt taken away, and it's back through center. Moynihan goes down. Slackert's got it. Shoots through traffic, deflects off the end boards, and close wants to stop play. He's getting testy in front of the net. Good job by Landon Slager to get that puck through. It wasn't on net, but he got it through. And another big face off, off to the left of Justin Close. Saw Castro there. I think he thought after he delivered that hit, maybe there was a dive involved. Looks like a couple of teams that have played each other now four times this year. If they've grown plenty familiar, they're, they're done with each other. <laughs> See if anybody can find a regulation winner. No goals in the first, two aside in the second, none here in the third. There's been plenty of entry. Justin Janicki had the first Irish goal. Throws on the brakes. Across it comes for Seedham. Feeds the slot. Pucks loose. Here's Strand. Couldn't get a clean shot on. Had to take it towards the corner. Seedham looking back door. Bavaro is streaking towards net. Gophers can clear, and this is up into the Irish bench to stop play. I like the puck movement there from Notre Dame. The defenseman getting involved. You know, at some point, though, you got to try and get the puck towards the net. They tried it earlier. It looked like Hunter Strand and Tyler Carpenter had something going in front of the net, but they just couldn't get a shot off. But again, we have a draw deep in the Gopher zone. Nelson's out there against Huglin. Clean win by Huglin. And the Gophers, just like that, clear their own end. Now Huglin's got it on his way in. Sends it across. Good recovery by Notre Dame. Looked like it was Ali able to break it up. That was a two-on-one. Chesley shoots for a deflection. Hits the back of Lamb. Then it was loose. Irish are out through the, through the neutral zone. Nelson shoots. Ali oh. through his legs was looking for the winner, and it went wide. Couldn't quite finish it. Carter Slaggard was hurt on the play. He was slow getting off the ice, but Ali with an excellent opportunity. Here's the trailer. Kester for the lead. And Bischel gets a piece. Benubel <laughs> goes down. This puck is cleared. And it's going to be an icing call. Two minutes to go. And Brennan Ali, if he scores this one, Steve, the house comes down. Well, I love the way they advance the puck, and then Ali, for some reason, gets in behind. Nobody realizes he's there. And you see, between the legs, and just can't get the toe of his stick on it. Now the other end, Ryan Bischel tested. This from about 20 feet out, and he makes the stop. Irish shot the faceoff, able to win and shoot. Final two minutes of regulation. Renzel gets it ahead for Snuggerud. Here's Snuggerud into the slot, tried to backhand it. Didn't get home. Puck's not out. Moore will track it down behind the net. Oliver Moore, his centering feed goes up in the air. Seedham lost his stick. Has to go back, so it's loose in front, and Pitlick redirection wouldn't go. Pitlick lifted the stick of Ryan Seedham. That's why he lost his stick. And then he spent time going to the corner to get it. As a result, Pitlick wide open in front. And he has a chance here on the redirection. You see him shaking his head. 
Now watch him lift the stick right there. That stick goes 15 feet in the air, so Seedham decides to get it. I, I would advise against that. I'd rather he stayed in front, but as a result, him getting his stick, the puck comes right to him. But look at how wide open Pitlick is. Oh, that goes off his skate, and Bischel still makes the stop. Looks like a timeout. Puck was timeout iced. Notre Dame. Does a couple things, right? Lets yeah. him get a breather, but also you see the top lines out there. I get the sense Jeff Jackson wants to make sure the top line's ready to go for maybe the final minute 20 or so, or at least take the first shift. Yeah, well, I think he's got the guys on the ice, but you hit it on the head. They've been out there for a little bit. Uh, you know, they need a little bit of a breather. We're going to get it here. Look at how we got here. Kurth got the scoring started. A few minutes later, Janicki, and then the two goals within 18 seconds. Davis and the response from the gopher captain, Nelson. And they all came in the second, but there have been plenty of chances, Steve, here in the third. Well, yeah, and especially the last seven or eight minutes, kind of end-to-end -end action, things have opened up quite a bit. Minnesota knocking on the door, 40 shots. They've got 38 right now to Notre Dame's 25. Both teams out of timeouts now. And the top lines will do battle in the circle here. Another clean win, too clean. Comes all the way out to center ice, and the Gophers have to tag up. See them back for it for Notre Dame. There's Patrick Moynihan. Gets it down low. Top line's gone off. They brought the third line out there. Slacker, though, remains on the ice. Nevers will carry it towards center. He pivots, drives it in. Bishop will stop it. 45 seconds left in the final regular season home game of the year for Notre Dame. Tipped in deep. Renzel is the first one to get there. Long feet ahead for Lamb. He's got some real estate to work with. Lamb pulls through on his way back and he lost the puck. Great second effort there from Pluszynski. And I think Ryan Carpenter maybe came back to lift the stick of Lamb. 15 seconds left in regulation time. This puck is not cleared. Clock's down to eight. And that's going to do it. These teams. Even after 60, they will go to overtime. Well, entertaining third period, no goals. Sets up a great overtime. We'll take a break. Come back with the extra five minutes right after this. Notre Dame and Minnesota are headed to overtime. They almost were not, Steve, because of that play. Yeah, Zach Buzinski did get beat on the rush by Lamb, but he gets on his horse, gets back, and kind of interferes with Lamb so he can't finish the shot. It's an amazing move by Brody Lamb. Kluzinski recovers, and now it's time for three-on-three -three overtime. Each team has earned a point in the Big Ten standings. You want to win an OT if you can for the pairwise purposes. If you can't win it there, you'll still take a shootout win. That'll just sort out how it goes down in the conference standings. It would go down as a tie as far as the NCAA is concerned. But you see here, Minnesota's at least guaranteed they'd be at 36. Right. If they get to 36, Notre Dame could grab a couple, get to 32, but that scenario we talked about where the Irish could jump within two is now kind of out the window. It seems pretty unlikely now that Notre Dame could catch Minnesota. It'll probably all come down to their series with Michigan for who gets home ice in that 4-5 matchup. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Minnesota guaranteed a point here, so it's going to be 36. Even if the Irish win, they get the 32, still four points back. And yeah, uh, obviously big weekends left against Michigan for both these teams. But here you go, always fun. Three on three overtime. And you know, the Irish seniors would like to go out in style. Here's one of them, Landon Slagger. Had it for a moment in the offensive end and dropped it off. Worth mentioning that last year, this night, senior night, it took nine innings in a shootout for Notre Dame to beat Ohio State. One man on man, and Renzel is responsible for Slagger. Here they are. Matched up. And then Notre Dame will patiently take their time. Slagger goes off. Seedham waits for Knubel to go off onto the ice. 
is Justin Janicki with Hunter Strand. Now Seedham will exit. Here comes Drew Bavaro. Janicki into the offensive end. Wow, lost the puck. Renzel takes it away. Gophers get their first chance, and they can go two on one if they hurry. Here comes Nelson with Snuggerud, and it's behind him. Snuggerud, though, retrieves the puck. Backhands in front. Chesley on his way in. Takes a spill down to the ice. The arms all remain down, and play continues. Yeah, I think Janicki might have, Justin Janicki might have gotten a stick in there on Chesley. Here's Bavaro looking for the win. Oh, close. What a save. A flash of leather made a big stop. Now Snuggerud, he can win it, and he does! Jimmy Snuggerud in overtime spoils Notre Dame senior night. Well, big stop by Close at one end, and then Ryan Bischel, it hit him, but he didn't stop enough of it because it squeezed through his arm, right between the blocker and his body. Snuggerud, we mentioned in the open, he's got a big time shot, and that thing, just overpowered the netminder. And Jimmy Snuggerud. That was a save by Close, and then the move here, move inside, get a little better angle on the shot. That's what Snuggerud does. And then the shot just squeaks through. Some people call it the seven hole between the blocker and the body of Ryan Bishop. Took him all weekend, Steve. I mean, he was up and down the ice. He had opportunity after opportunity. Jimmy Snuggerud waited till the final moments, but he gets the big goal. A big one for Minnesota going in to their bye week next week. They can keep the momentum. This is a team that can obviously still make another Frozen Four push. Certainly can, and it was a well-fought game. It's a really a fantastic weekend for the Irish, even though they only pick up the four points. Uh, I think it gives them a little bit of confidence heading into the end of the season and obviously heading into the Big Ten con the uh, Big Ten tournament. It'll be fun to watch how these teams shake out in conference play. Who knows, maybe they'll meet up. Could be a great second round series maybe in the Big Ten tournament. That's gonna do it for us tonight and for the season. Steve, pleasure it was awesome. Pleasure was all mine, thanks Tony. For Steve Conroy, Derek Coleman, our producer, what a season from him. The rest of the outstanding crew here in South Bend. Tony Simeone for the final time in 2024, saying so long from Notre Dame.